Cenotaph, Song 28. Wow, what a journey, right? I look forward to uh, <laughs> taking one of uh, those gummy bears that my friends like to take and listening to this whole album at some point. I haven't done that yet. Last we saw Shiny, he was on stage singing one of his old gems, one that the crowd wished he'd write another one, and he was whisked off stage by Ruby, who, moving swiftly as only a robot could, grabbed him, shoved Osira aside, and went off into the night. So we come up here on the next scene in our mental movie, and what do we have? A bear Spartan apartment, sunlight shining through the, uh, the drawn shades. And what do we see? In two chairs sitting opposite one another, but Ruby and Shiny. And in this conversation, the pure consciousness of Shiny through Ruby speaks to Shiny, the living being. So we have it's a conversation, but the song is voiced from the perspective of Ruby as Shiny's pure consciousness singing to Shiny. So yeah, narratively, it's very simple. It's a very simple scene. Nothing happens other than the address that um, pure Shiny makes to real Shiny, now sitting in a chair, wondering 24 hours hours later after sort of landing on Earth, maybe less or something. You know, it's a short amount of time he's stepped out of the capsule. He's now sort of had a second to figure out what's going on. And here is Pure Shiny saying, hey, by the way, here's what's really going on. I, I love this scene, uh, not because I figured it out. In fact, I don't think I figured it out as deep as it could be yet. The song grapples with the subject matter. And when you hear the lyrics of the song, hopefully it'll resonate in that particular way. Let me put it this way. If you could stop time and talk to yourself, but from a place of no fear, complete intellectual superiority, no emotion, and strictly just break it down. Like, hey, here's what you need to know right now. Here's what's important. Here's, I've taken the time, albeit a nanosecond, to organize for you what really matters. Because I'm devoid of an emotional or sentimental attachment, I can kind of break it down what it needs to be. This would be a song I look forward to because it's probably the only, outside of the end of uh, Springtimes, it's the only sort of kind of acoustic-ish moment on the whole record. It's a rare moment of a breath. The inside baseball on this song is we had recorded a version that I completely blew up. I grew disgusted with it. And I grabbed my acoustic guitar and said to Howard, I'm so sick of trying to fix all these songs and bring them all in the future. I don't care. What if we just do it like this? And an hour later, I was recording the song.